Let's also take it across uh, to then um, discuss Vedanta and uh, more dividend coming in for Vedanta. Um, they've got a capital allocation policy as well, loan repayment timeline. So let's try and understand all of these parameters. We have with us Sunil Dukkal, the group CEO at Vedanta, joining in on the show right now. Sunil, hi, good morning. Good to have you on the show. Uh, I'm just looking at your numbers. The aluminum business has been your star performer with a record a beta uh, margin as well. Tell us what triggered this and are these margin levels sustainable for some uh, for the next foreseeable future? As far as aluminum business is concerned, I think uh, we have done very well. Uh, the better contribution has been around $1,000 per ton. And uh, the uh, volume has also gone up. We took decision at some point of time about 10 years back that uh, we are going to preserve our margin. And at the same time, we also took a decision that we are going to ramp up our aluminum volume. I'm very proud to say uh, the efforts have yielded results, both uh, in terms of volume as as far as cost, the cost, uh, we have been able to contain the cost, uh, although the uh, commodity prices or the aluminum prices have gone up. So the aluminum prices, uh, uh, with this aluminum prices and the cost, uh, we could contribute around $1,000 of the EBITDA. And this quarter, the highest contribution from the aluminum business, surpassing zinc business uh, in our portfolio. So we are pr very proud of it. But going ahead, there are a lot of structural measures uh, we are taking. We want to make this company as more uh, integrated uh, by securing the raw material sources of bauxite, uh, raising the capacity of Lanjigarh, uh, which you also know we declared the project two quarters back. And as we speak, the project is on, uh, which we want to complete in the next 12 to 15 months' time. So the uh, complete supply of alumina through the domestic bauxite will uh, come to our smelters and uh, operationalization of the three coal blocks, which we have won, will also reduce the coal cost by another 30, 35%. So it will reduce our uh, uh, aluminum cost uh, by say around $300, $400. And uh, as you must have also noticed, uh, we declared two quarters back that uh, uh, we are raising our value added product capacity. Uh, the new smelter, uh, which we have announced at Balco, will also come up with 100% VAP capacity. So our intention is to make uh, the company 100% VAP. This could also contribute uh, another $200 of the additional NSR. So with a potential of $500 per ton and from an existing level of $1,000, even if uh, we see the commodity headwinds, we should still should be able to you know, uh, contribute $1,000 or better. But uh, my own sense is that the, even the commodity prices are going to stay. Uh, at current level, looking at the global equations which are emerging, looking at the renewable power and other focus and the demands opening up. Sunil, despite a 13% sequential improvement in Brent prices, oil and gas EBITDA was flat for you. Has the higher profit sharing at Rajasthan block impacted your profitability? Yes, you're right. Uh, uh, the profit petroleum was 60%. And as per the agreement, uh, it went up from 40% to 50%. So that means the minimum profit petroleum will have to pay 50%, but uh, maximum it can go to 60%. So it will range between 50 to 60%. Uh, it has a, a equation with the investment multiple. Uh, the Because of our uh, less uh, investment last year because of COVID, uh, the profit petroleum has gone to the uh, upper level of the trench, and it is at 60%, but it could range between. So that is the reason. But now with the count, uh, the crude prices looking up and the production also becoming better because this last part of the gas sale got impacted because of the demand in Gujarat, where our uh, pipeline, gas pipeline goes, GSPC pipeline goes. Uh, but now the demand uh, resuming, industrial demand resuming, in fact, going up and uh, the production also going up uh, as we will progress quarter to quarter with the new drilling and infill drilling which is going on. Uh, we are quite confident uh, that the trajectory of uh, uh, the contribution from oil and gas business will also look up. Mr. Dugal, let's talk about ESL Steel. How is it integrating? Its uh, realizations in EBITDA have been significantly lower than the industry average. 
when according to you will those levels improve and also do you have capex planned so i think uh, we uh, we are taking all measures on the complete value chain in this business uh, right from uh, improving the uh, internal efficiency uh, improving the asset health uh, digital efforts uh, debottlenecking of the existing furnaces uh, finishing the unfinished project uh, which we took over uh, from the previous promoter uh, raising the ultimate capacity to 3 million ton uh, raising the uh, value added product capacity because uh, ultimately we want to sell 100% uh, uh, product as the value added product and making the product portfolio in such a way that it gives us some flexibility depending on the market condition and the way the market uh, demand comes and which product market demand comes uh, and some marketing efforts so i think uh, the uh, overall all these actions uh, will take us to the industry best and uh, in the coming quarters you will see that uh, this uh, business will be cont contributing a healthy uh, contribution in our uh, overall pie Mr. Dukal, your debt ratios have come off uh, quite substantially. That's also on account of the receipt of the first installment of a loan taken by VRL. Will you be able to maintain the uh, debt to EBITDA ratio at 0.6x? Uh, and uh, did you see higher working capital during the quarter? Yeah, so uh, the working capital you see is, 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 a, is a function of the commodity project. If, if you have a WIP, uh it is evaluated based on the commodity prices so that is why you must have seen uh, the working capital going up but uh, we also had uh, uh, the sale pressure at the end of the quarter because of the covid impact uh, our otherwise our results would have been still better uh, with that now the demand opening up commodity pricing uh, prices looking better looking good uh, the debottlenecking effort bringing the result digital set health uh, optimization effort bringing result some of our brownfield expansion uh, yielding results and uh, the volume will going going, going up and i think the cost curve uh, you will see the lower trajectory and even if the commodity prices stay i think uh, will will make a healthy contribution of a beta and this trajectory of the uh, the net debt uh, going down, I think uh, this could be maintained, but ultimately any vision or the dream of any organization is to uh, make the company debt free. And that is our intention in the next uh, couple of years. Okay. Mr. Dugal, you know, you've hinted at higher dividend for Vedanta Limited, that too via raising debt. Now, explain to our viewers that why in a commodity upcycle when most miners and, you know, metal producers are plowing money back into growth capex, you think it's prudent, prudent to be doling out new debt as dividend? Well, it's a combination of many things. You see, the capex is, uh, we declared the uh, previous quarter that... Uh, the capex guidance was 1.8 billion dollar uh, the project and the sustaining together with the declaration of uh, the new capex plan i think still the overall cash flow will be restricted to 2 billion dollars but in the coming year we will give the guidance as we go forward with the uh, balance sheet looking healthy uh, and uh, the contribution uh, from all the businesses becoming better the trajectory of a beta going up uh, I think uh, you you will have the news on the dividend also in the coming quarter. Now, Vedanta Resources has its own focus on debt reduction as well. So, I mean, when can we, Vedanta Limited, expect the receipt of the balance of the $1 billion loan extended to them? So all efforts are on. I cannot divulge uh, every information as to what exactly we are doing. But the intent is very clear. We want to make Vedanta Limited, Vedanta PLC, both debt-free company. If the God bless uh, the way the company is performing in all our assets and even in new acquisition like FECA, uh, I think the coming quarter is a very exciting journey for us.
All right, Mr. Dugal, thank you so much for joining us this morning to talk about Vedanta Limited's results. And with that, we'll take a very short break on the show. Be right back.